Welcome to A-Level and AP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss one typical type of question on hall voltage. But this question is very important for your exam because these type of questions are very common in CIE final exam. And today's question is from May June 20. 21. For part A, we need to state what is meant by a magnetic field. This is very basic question and very common question in many past papers. If you go through different past papers, you will see this question is very common. So you need to understand how to state what is a magnetic field. First of all, let's try to understand little bit about magnetic field if you are not very clear. Now this is very basic one, so I will just explain a few points. Let's say this a bar magnet and we can also draw the magnetic field around this one so this is magnetic field you can draw around this one so you can also add arrows to show direction of magnetic field lines but you also need to understand magnetic field line does not only stop at the poles they continue inside the magnet as well so this is different between magnetic field and electric field now what is magnetic field Magnetic field simply, this is the region around this magnet in which an other magnet, for example, we have another magnet, let's say this also has North Pole and South Pole. If we bring this magnet closer to this one, means in this region, it will experience magnetic force. On other hand, we can also bring a charge, let's say this is a moving charge, it has charge on this, this is a moving charge. If we bring this moving charge, means this moving charge charge pass through this region this moving charge will also experience a force we can also bring a current carrying conductor let's say this is our conductor and current is passing through this one and if we bring this current carrying conductor inside this region this conductor will also experience a force so this is current carrying conductor so this is current carrying conductor we can write down here so this current carrying conductor will also experience force so that region what we call is magnetic field now let me explain to you how to write your answer this is how you can write down your answer you can simply say region of space even if you simply say region you don't say space that's okay you can say region of space where a moving charge may experience may experience force because the moving charge if it is moving parallel to the magnetic field it will not experience force so that's the reason we are saying may experience around a magnet or you can say a region around a magnet where another magnet will experience a force means if you have one magnet let's say this is magnet a if you bring another magnet inside the magnetic field of this magnet this magnet b this will experience a force so this is how simply you can define very basic idea i hope it is clear to you what is magnetic field for part b aluminium foil is shown in figure 9.1 it is also given to us that the magnetic field is normal to phase PQRS of the foil. Means to this phase PQRS. Magnetic field is normal to this phase. Electrons each of charge negative Q enter the foil at right angles to the phase PQTV. PQTV. So this is direction of movement of electrons. For part 1 on figure 9.1, we need to shade the face of the foil on which electrons initially accumulate. First of all, let's try to write down what is given to us. For this question, we have direction of magnetic field and that is perpendicular to this face, means that is perpendicular. So this is direction of magnetic field. We can simply write down B and its direction is vertically downwards. We also have direction of movement of electrons. We can simply say this is electric current due to flow of electrons. And this is to the right. So we can draw a small arrow. So this is telling us current is to the right. And this current is due to flow of electrons. If we can find out direction of magnetic force on these electrons, then we can determine 
direction in which these electrons will be deflected. So how we can find direction of magnetic force on these electrons? For that purpose, we need to recall Fleming left hand rule. So simply let me write on here. Fleming left hand rule we can use for conventional current means due to flow of positive charges so this is conventional current we can use when we have direction of conventional current so conventional current and magnetic field direction of magnetic field and force when we have two of them we can found the third one and this is the force so this is simply force this is force in Fleming left hand rule the thumb points in direction of force and first finger so we can write down the first finger this points in direction of magnetic field we can write down first finger and the middle finger for conventional current we use middle finger so we can write down middle finger for conventional current simply we need to use our left hand and we can find direction of force on positive charges so we will assume this one if this was a positive charge so let's say if this was a positive charge now we can use Fleming left hand rule and we can find direction of magnetic force on positive charge electron has opposite charge so direction of force on electrons will be in opposite direction let's try to use the left hand rule right now you can see here now in this case magnetic field is down as you can see here i have already drawn here this is direction of magnetic field in this case the flow of electrons we are assuming electron is a positive charge now so this is to the right so this is direction of positive charge so this is to the right and the force is pointing this way so the force is pointing into the page so i will just draw small cross here into the page so if it was a positive charge but it is electron so the force on this electron is out of the page so we can assume if electron was here it will experience force this way so this is direction of magnetic force on electrons so this side electrons will accumulate on this side so this side will be negatively charged so simply we can write down our answer the phase ps ps wv electrons will be accumulated on this phase PSWV. for part b2 we need to explain why electrons do not continuously accumulate on the phase you have shaded it simply means that at the beginning electrons will accumulate on this phase PSWV but that will happen for very short period of time after that electrons will continue moving in a straight line we need to explain why it is happening first of all let's try to understand when this side become more negative as compared with this side electric field will set up between these two phases means accumulation of electrons will cause electric field so electric field will set up like this between these two phases let me draw another electric field lines so the first point we need to understand accumulation of electrons it will cause electric field so we can write down accumulation of electrons causes electric field so this is the first point causes e field i will simply write down causes electric field between these two phases the second thing we need to understand there is electric field electron is also in the electric field now this electron will also expand experience electric force electron will experience electric force and that force is opposite to magnetic force electron experience electric force so second point we can write down electron experience electric force and this electric force will oppose means will oppose the magnetic force we can also write down fe opposes magnetic force so fe opposes fb finally fe will be equal to fb finally after a certain period of time fe will be equal to fb at that time there will be no more accumulation means electrons will not accumulate 
no more accumulation we can simply write down and electrons they will just go in a straight line this is what we need to write to answer this question this question has three marks so if we mention these three points you will get three marks now let me show you how to write a proper answer this is how you can write down a proper answer as you can see here i have written in detail so you can see first point accumulating electrons cause an electric field electric force due to electric field opposes magnetic force as we have mentioned here and the third point accumulation stop when these two forces are equal for part c expression for hall voltage is given and this is the expression means this is the formula for hall voltage vh here this is the hall voltage so let me write down here vh here this is representing hall voltage hall voltage i here i is the current in the foil so i is the current b is the magnetic field density or we can say this is magnetic flux density so this is magnetic flux density or magnetic field density P. You need to understand all these symbols, the meaning of these symbols. And here, this is for number density of charge carriers. So this is number density of charge carriers number density of charge carriers or simply you can say number density it simply means that the number of charge carriers per unit volume so this is number density of charge carriers we can write down t here this is the thickness the t here for thickness this is thickness of side through which magnetic field is passing for example in this case this is our magnetic field and the magnetic field is passing through this side so magnetic field is passing through this side so t is the thickness of this side so this is the t thickness of side through which magnetic field is passing so that is t q is the charge on single electron this is a constant so this is 1.6 times 10 to negative 19 coulomb negative 19 coulomb so this is what we need to understand about hall voltage formula now let's try to answer the first one it's simply asking you meaning of quantity n we have already mentioned this is number density of charge carriers and the next one is asking us using the letters on figure 9.1 identify the distance t so the distance t this we need to identify simply we can write down this distance is equal to pv or you can say this is equal to s w you can also say that this is equal to QT. So we can also write down this is equal to QT. So this is how you can write down your answers. Simply you can you have to write down number density of charge carriers, PV, SW, even you can write QT. For part D, we need to explain why Hall probes are made of semiconductor material, not made of metal. For that purpose, we need to understand the expression for Hall voltage VH Hall voltage this is equal to BI over NTQ now let's say we have two different pieces one made of semiconductor so let's say this is piece of semiconductor so simply we can write down let's say this is piece of semiconductor and the second piece this is made of metal so this is made of metal if you look at this formula let's say the thickness of these two material is the same t means the distance traveled by magnetic field in semiconductor and the distance traveled by magnetic field in metal means t is the same then this is b this is the external magnetic field that is the same for metal that is also same for semiconductor current this is provided by power supply this is also the same q is a constant so this q is a constant so this is also same if t means t we have to keep same for these two materials in the distance traveled by magnetic field in semiconductor and metal also has to be the same for a fair test then only one property is left that is n that will be different for semiconductor and also that will be different for metal if this n is small then hall voltage will be large 
fast semiconductor this n is much smaller so the vh is much larger that's the reason hall probes are made of semiconductor instead of metals because n the number density for them is lower so hall voltage is greater for the same thickness in the same magnetic field for the same amount of current passing through foil now let me explain to you how to write the answer so this is how simply you can write down the answer you can say for semiconductor n is much smaller so the vh is much larger only one mark if you just write down this one point you will get one mark